I do not come with a word from America, but I come this afternoon with a word from God. Jesus Christ of Nazareth has sent me here to tell you that you can walk. Robert Tilton Ministries, we continue to reach the world with a message of hope. Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. Psalms 50, 14 and 15. Life a year ago seems like a lifetime away. It's the, is so different. A year ago, the pressure was just unbelievable. It was, the burden was unbelievable. It was, we never had enough money. I was scared to answer the telephone because I knew it was gonna be a bill collector. And I, I didn't know what to say to him. For Sandy and her husband, Craig, the nightmare began when Craig, a helicopter pilot, was injured in a crash landing. And he was off work for about two and a half months. And then he went back to work. And during the time he was off work, bills stacked up upon bills. Plus, we had doctor bills now, because he went to therapy, went to so many different doctors. And it was just bills, bills, bills. So many bills that Sandy and Craig had to haul their VCR and other valuables to the pawn shop. I was scared at first to make a vow because I was scared of what, you know, what Craig might say. You know, I watched the show and I would, I started telling him a little bit at a time when he would come in in the afternoon. I would tell him, you know, what happened on Robert Chilton and, you know, how the people were testifying. And it, then it came to the point where Craig says, okay, make a vow. You know, it can't hurt anything. Make a vow. So I said, okay. So I made the first vow. And after that first vow, it was like a door opened to another dimension. It was like a door opened and we stepped inside this door and we could feel God. We could really feel Him. Sandy and Craig especially sought God's help concerning their children. They each had two children from previous marriages and had all four of them to feed and entertain for the summer. But Sandy didn't see how that was going to be possible. I wanted the kids to have a good time. And I had been crying. I was. I was in the back crying, and then I heard Robert Tilton come on. So I came in here, and I sat down, and he had a guest on that day. I don't remember who or what, but I remember he was talking to the guest, and all of a sudden he just turned away from the guest, and he turned to the TV, and um, he said it was, but it, it was God speaking through him, and he said, there's someone out there who's been crying, and they've been, you've been crying for your children, and he says, I'm telling you, don't worry about your children. Your children are going to have everything that you want for them. They're going to have everything that they need and everything that you want. And he said, this time next year, you're not going to believe where you're at. And when Craig came home, I told Craig, whenever he came home, I said, he talked to me today. I know it was me and everything's going to be okay. Sandy says an incredible string of financial miracles started with Craig discovering an uncashed check in a drawer. Somehow, and we know how now, that check just totally, it got forgotten about. It was in the drawer and he found that check. And that, that was the first thing. It was like, God's had this check. He's right in, in savings for us. And it, it was, we could feel him then. Two days later, Craig sold a car he and Sandy had been trying to get rid of for months. And Craig walked in the door with the money in his hand for the car. And I was listening to the radio at the time. That's when they were having a contest on the radio station, $1,000 Thursday. So right as Craig walked in the door, I was in the kitchen cooking and I had the radio on. They came on and said, okay, it's time, call in, 11th caller wins. And I said, Craig, Craig, call, call. You know. Craig's call was literally on the money. He won $1,000 on the spot. And the kids and I, we just started screaming. We were so excited. It was, you know, it was really exciting. It was, oh, you know, and it was, the first thing that came to mind, it's God. You know, with it, as soon as it, the very first thing, you know, it was so great because it, it's God. He's moving. You know, we we made a vow, and we were living up to our part, and He was living up to His, and it was just, it was great. 
But that was only the beginning. Craig and Sandy received a totally unexpected check from their insurance company, with a letter urging them to cash it. They spent the summer taking their children to the zoo, to festivals and ice skating, with many of the events miraculously paid for. Sandy says Craig returned to work, where he was the day of our story, and has since received two raises and an excellent work schedule. What do you think it was about making a vow that changed things for you? Because I was finally being obedient to him. Because he told me to make the vow, and I, was, I finally gave it to him. I was finally obedient, I finally showed my faith. I had faith, but I never showed it. And I finally showed that faith. And once I did that, the doors opened and everything changed. We were putting money first, and we were being stingy about it. We were putting it in front of God. And whenever we finally put God first and put the money, you know, give it up, it doesn't mean anything. It's you, it's God. That's when things changed. That's when our faith changed, our life changed. Wasn't that an incredible testimonial of how God took Craig and Sandy's mustard seed faith? They didn't despise the day of small beginnings, but they learned to use their faith like a seed. Jesus said, if you'll have faith like a seed, nothing would be impossible unto you. Craig and Sandy were perishing. The devil was just beating them up in every direction, trying to steal, kill, and to destroy their lives. But God sent me as a prophet who prophesies and speaks the rhema word of faith into people's lives. It's no accident that you're sitting in front of this television set. I'm here in front of this camera and there's no distance between you and I and the presence of the Lord. God has a word for you, a word of faith, a word that produces faith. Oh yes, for this is the victory that overcomes the world the problems of life, the adversities that the evil one would try to discourage you with. This is the victory, saith the Lord, even your faith. But many of my people are perishing because of lack of knowledge. My people have lost vision and given sight to the things that are seen instead of giving sight to me, saith the Lord, the unseen one. So look not at the things around you, but get your eyes back on me. For I will bring you into that land of milk and honey that I have prepared for you even before the foundation of the world. But listen to my servant and allow him to speak in your spirit being. For I am here today through my servant to speak to you to change the circumstances and the conditions in your life. So listen closely, saith the Lord. For I'm speaking through him my living word. Even as I spoke in the very beginning and created the heavens and the earth, my word goes forth and does not return unto me void, but accomplishes that which I please and will prosper whereunto the thing that I sent it, saith the Lord. I'm sending my word to you this day. Think it not strange that I would operate through the gifts of the Holy Spirit? For truly saith God, I'm here to minister to you that rhema, that living word of faith, to create a miracle in every area of your life saith the Lord. Thank you, Lord. The gifts of the Holy Spirit bring power and revelation to those that decide to be a believer. Craig and Sandy were perishing. They didn't know what to do. But God used me through the gifts of the Holy Spirit to bring a miracle into their life. Just as God sent Elijah to the woman in 1 Kings 17, he sent a prophet's reward. Those, Jesus said, that receive a prophet receives the prophet's blessing or the prophet's reward. God has given me a powerful truth on how to worship God through your giving. Jesus said when they asked him about their money, he says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. So many of God's people are eating God's holy seed, their tithes and their offerings. And they don't know, but they've opened themselves up to the enemy to steal, kill, and destroy in their life. But God said, prove me, test me, and see if I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing to you that there's not room enough to receive it all. And then he also said he would rebuke the devourer that's been eating your crops and stealing your harvest. Isn't that something? The power of worshiping God through giving. 
powerful scripture there in Psalms 50, verses 14 and 15. It says, Honor the Lord. Let all that be round about him bring gifts unto him that ought to be feared. Instead of fearing the things around us, we should put our reverential fear and holy respect toward God. There's something about worshiping God through your giving. That vow, that thanksgiving vow of faith, comes right out of Psalms 50, 14 and 15, where it says, Sacrifice thanks offerings unto God. Thanksgiving offerings. And he said, I'll hear your prayer. In the day of trouble, I will deliver you, and you will glorify me, saith the Lord. And then another powerful scripture here is in Psalms 50, the NIV translation, the 23rd verse. He who sacrifices thanks offerings honors me, and he prepares the way. See, that thanksgiving vow of faith, those offerings, tithes and offerings, I like to say on a weekly basis, he who, this is God talking here, he who sacrifices thanks offerings honors me, and he, that's you, prepares the way, like Craig and Sandy, prepares the way so that I may show him the salvation of God. In Psalms 14, thanks, sacrifice thanks offerings to God. Fulfill your vows to the Most High. And he said, call upon me in the day of your troubles and I will deliver you. Years ago, I learned how to make a vow of faith. How to make a pledge promise to God and then begin to pay on it. Where all at once, I started with $100 and then we went to $1,000 and we began to grow our faith worshiping God. You say, Bob, why should I do that? Because first of all, it belongs to God. A portion of what you get belongs to God is to be reinvested back into God's kingdom and God's house, God's work. First day of the week, lay in store, in God's storehouse, your heavenly account, amen, so God can prosper you. Here it says, this is a powerful scripture, 2 Corinthians 9, 10. And God, say God, who provides seed for the sower, so God gave Craig and Sandy, after they stepped out and made that $1,000 vow of faith, in faith, doesn't mean you have it, but you just begin to pay on it, worship God the first of each week or once a month as God begins to give you the seed. He'll test you. He'll bring money into your hands, a little here, a little there, maybe $50, $100, $25, $10, but God will begin to put it into your hands. See, oh, yes. For he will give you favor around you. Did not he bring the children of Israel? For I brought the children of Israel out of the bondages and the perils of Egypt. And did I not use them to spoil the Egyptians? Did I not give them favor? Yea, saith God. And they asked, and they were insistent about the things that they had. And did not I give them favor and they spoiled the Egyptians with the silver and the gold and the jewels and the diamonds? There's a great divine wealth transfer, saith the Lord. I'm transferring what belongs to me out of the hands of the sinner, the unrighteous, the unbeliever. And I'm bringing it into the hands of those that decide that they will be a believer and want God's best. I have provided my best for you, saith the Lord. Worship me. Give me some seed. Give me something to work with, and I will multiply it back to you and increase the fruits of your righteousness, saith the Lord. God will give you seed. He then will multiply your resources for sowing. He will give you personally bread to eat, things that you need in your daily bread, and then he will increase the fruits of your righteousness. Seed, that comes from the, the root word sperma which means that when you sow that seed, it has the ability to produce offspring, our results, our fruit. It's a powerful thing to make a covenant, a vow of faith with God, and begin to worship God. Right now, there's a phone number on the screen. I want you to call and say, Bob, God has spoken to me through you, and I want to make a vow of faith and worship God today. Also, when you call, I want to send you my miracle plan book that explains how to get into faith and to operate in the working of miracles, some very, spe uh, very special blessed miracle oil and some a blessed 
prayer cloth, according to James 5.14. There's also our, our, our PayPal account on our website that you can worship God today. Maybe $100. Maybe God's speaking to your heart. In fact, he's speaking to a person to worship God right now with a $100 vow of faith and to sow some seed today, maybe $500 or 1000 Now, we're going to some more announcements, some more remarkable testimonials, and get ready to get blessed. Now, get out of that chair and go to the phone and call me and let your request be made known. Amen. With that vow, your faith is released because you begin to watch for God to move in your life. It puts the faith in your heart. It truly affects your heart. Since the beginning of time, God has had a divine plan for His people. A message from the Father designed to revolutionize life as we know it. Although the message is simple, it's often ignored. If you want to know more about God's miracle plan for man, call now and let us send you a free copy of this powerful book by Robert Tilton, God's Miracle Plan for Man. Read it and reap it. He gives seed to sow, bread to eat, multiplies and increases fruit. 2 Corinthians 9.10 As so many people do when we first were married and stuff, it's tight. Finances are tight. And you live from paycheck to paycheck, some folks do. We were uh, at the bottom, or at least I was. Uh, I felt beat up by life. You know, I just didn't feel like I could uh, continue. I was very discouraged. Uh, I mean, we would get uh, jobs and uh, then we would have nothing. We'd have a dry spell for maybe four or five months. I didn't think that things could get better. You know, I just thought that, that this was it. And Pastor Tilton was talking about and, and pulling scriptures from God's Word about it. When he said someone needs to make a thousand dollar vow and, uh, and, and they need to do it to get out of, you know, financial bind and get out of living in lack and living in poverty level, you know, or whatever. But I remember, I remember distinctly the, the Lord said, that's what you need to do. The Holy Spirit said, make the vow. Every time I would give, he would give back to me. It was a blessing. And I immediately uh, got on the phone and made a vow right after this program. Pastor Tilton really encouraged my faith just to step out and believe God for our needs and even our desires. We paid off our land, paid off the trailer. We uh, bought the pickup truck we, we needed desperately. It was from my vowing and my believing God. I tried in my own strength to do things for years, and sometimes I would prosper for a season, but I never uh, prospered in, anywhere close to what I'm making now financially. I felt that something was going to change because um, I made the step for the vow, and I knew that God's promises were true. Vowing is so special because it has made our life real abundant. Um, life is just, it's a lot more exciting. And it, it's just really neat to watch how the Lord moves. If the Holy Spirit is dealing with you to make a vow, do it and you just see what God won't do for you in return. Things will change mightily. Powerful testimonials of what God will do when people dare to make a decision to say yes to God's best, yes to health, yes to prosperity, yes to faith, yes to abundance, yes to success instead of failure. Say yes to God's best. These are men and women, believers, and belief is a verb. It means you have action. You can have uh, faith without works. It doesn't get anywhere. It's just dead faith. Or you can have works without any faith. But like rowing a boat, you need to have your faith with your works, and you get that boat going in the right direction. These are believers who said yes to God's best, 
and they begin to operate in a higher level of favor where men begin to give into their life or their bosom. Jesus said give and it would be given back. And I say in the name of Jesus, give and it will be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your life. Every area of your life, when you dare to begin to give, give what belongs to God. Give your talents. Give your time. Get involved with being a giver. Okabashata. For the liberal soul shall be made fat, saith God. Didn't I say that he that withholdeth more than he should, it will tend to poverty? And he thinks he has something in his hand, and when he opens it, there's nothing there. But a blessing is upon those who sow their seed. Yea, sow your seed, saith the Lord. And doubtless you'll come again rejoicing, bringing in your sheaves or bringing in your harvest. I've put my servant in front of you today to speak into your life, to show you how to break the curse of lack, how to move into my abundance. For I will give you great favor in these last days because there is a divine transfer of wealth, saith God, coming out of the hands of the sinner into the hands of the righteous. For didn't I say the wealth of the sinner is laid up in store for the righteous? Didn't I say that I caused the sinner to heap it up that he may give it to him that is good in my sight? Understand, saith the Lord, I am the source of your supply. But worship me. Give me some seed. Give me some mustard seed faith, something to work with. And I will multiply it and I will increase the fruits of your righteousness, saith the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm reminded now of Jonah, who was swallowed by a big fish. There's a person watching me. You feel all swallowed up by life. But Jonah said they, these words. He said, they that observe lying vanities. Jonah 2, 8. They that observe lying vanities. Those that look at the problems of life, they forsake their own mercy. But he said, I will sacrifice unto thee with a voice of thanksgiving. I will pay my vows that I have made unto you. And God caused the fish to spit him out on dry ground. Can you imagine that? Jonah decided to quit looking at the problems and start looking to God at the solution. Making a vow, whether it's a hundred or five hundred or a thousand dollar vow in faith, is God uses that to get your eyes off the problems and off the natural circumstances and situations. Oh, that's strong. And to get your eyes on him. That's why it's so powerful, such a powerful truth. It's not something you have to do, but you decide in your heart, I'm going to make a covenant, a vow of faith to God. And I'm going to start worshiping God every week, every month as God provides the seed. Every week, just worship God. It keeps your eyes on the Lord as your source. As the Apostle Paul said, when they had brought him some finances and some gifts and contributions in Philippians 4.19, after they had given into his life, the Apostle Paul's life, which by the way, wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. A rabbi Jew converted to Jesus Christ wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Why? He knew that Christ was the Messiah. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you. Can I say something? God's the biggest giver. He gave the ultimate seed, Jesus Christ, into our life. If you've never received Christ, oh, thank you, Lord. When you receive Christ, you're receiving eternal life, the incorruptible seed. And as you worship God, as you get your mind renewed so you won't be conformed or under the influence or controlled by this world, glory to God, translated out of lack into abundance, translated out of darkness <laughs> into light, Oh, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. I'm getting blessed right now. I'm getting blessed right now. Thank you, Lord. Accept Christ, the best seed there is. God so loved, <laughs> you are loved, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes, learns to trust and put their faith and confidence in him and what he said shall have everlasting glory to God, eternal life. Thank you, Lord. Just say, God, I accept Christ as my Savior from the problems of life now. Save means to be made whole, whole person prosperity. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. The power of worshiping God through your tithes and offerings and making vows of faith. It's a powerful thing. Even the Apostle Paul in Acts 18 made vows unto God and fulfilled them in Jerusalem. David, Psalm 66, he said, we went through the fire and we went through the floods. 
But, oh, God, thou brought us out into a wealth. There's that divine transfer again. A wealthy place. I will fulfill my vows, which my lips hath spoken when I was in trouble. It's a powerful thing. I mean, it gets your faith going. You step out of where you are. You're going to be sitting in that same chair, laying on that same couch, mumbling and grumbling, unless you do something with your faith. So many people bury their faith, they never use it. But God is moving, this divine transfer of wealth, this divine favor. You saw the testimonials of Craig and Sandy. You saw the testimonials of other brothers and sisters that are using their faith. And today they're seeing miracles happen in your, their life. God uses me as a prophet to bring a prophet's blessing. I'm not sent to everyone, but those of you, ooh, I just heard of Mary. Those of you that will accept me and this message, it will bring miracles into your life. According to God's word, that woman that was perishing, 1 Kings 17, because of lack of knowledge, but the prophet began to speak. And I say to you, my brother, my sister, my God will supply all your need. According to his riches and glory, God's a giver. God so loved the world he gave. Jesus said, give and to be given back unto you. You need to get out of that chair. You need to go to your phone right now and you need to call me on my recording. They'll give me the, the message from you and make a vow of faith. Father, speak to their heart now. The one that should make a hundred, a five hundred or a thousand dollar vow of faith. Speak to their heart, oh God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, I've got to go. There's, a, there's our website there where we have a donation button and a PayPal account, a secured donation site. Someone needs to make a $100 donation today, right now, to go to our website. Also, write the phone number down. Get your pencil, write that phone number down on the screen, and when we go off the air, go to your phone. Don't sit there another moment. You're going, you've got to do something, least you do nothing. Amen? And the little woman uh, worship God with her tithes and offerings until... God changed her circumstances until you need to move on with something else with your faith. Well, I've got to go. I've enjoyed so much being with you today. Call me so I can send you some more information, the free book, the blessed oil, the prayer cloths, all the things that God has for you. It's no accident God put me in front of you today. This is Robert Hilton reaching out to you. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Second Chronicles 2020. Remember when you made your vow of faith to God, how excited you were, and why you were so eager to promise God a portion of your finances. Many who've made vows to God through Robert Tilton Ministries know what it's like to have lived from paycheck to paycheck. However, by making a vow to God and faithfully paying on that vow, these same people have learned how to break the curse of poverty. Today, they're living in prosperity. Every time you pay on your vow, remember, God will keep His promise and give to you. You have been watching Success in Life with Bob and Maria Tilton. It is our prayer that this program has been an inspiration and blessing to you. Remember, write or call today. On behalf of everyone at Success in Life, be encouraged, don't give up, and remember, the best is yet to come.